Hello everyone and welcome back to Third Age Total War Divide and Conquer, specifically in version 5, the beta of which I have been playing. If you do not know that at this point, uh, I'm not sure what you've been watching. But anyway, we're continuing on as the R. Adunayim, and so it looks like we're in a good position to finally press on to Dunlarak, which has a decent Dunlending force here, but we've got an army in Tharbad and it is ready to roll out like a transformer. Um, although actually no one has movement right now, two generals cannot move, so do we really want to move out this turn and have a captain out here? I guess we have Farazhan, he could probably lead them. Might not be a bad call, because I think this army could probably defend against anything that they send at us, as long as it's not like the full army itself. So yeah, I think Farazhan will have to lead the army. Can you leave Baile? He can, that's great. So let's bring in our... Um, units here who cannot move looks like they can't Is it just that one unit of halberds? I think it is Okay, yeah, everyone else can move but that doesn't mean everyone else will move We're gonna want our heavy units here and we'll want Gimelzor for the attack because he's got that bodyguard and probably even Gimelthon um, One of them or the other maybe Gimelthon would be better here with the crossbows We'll take our Ardenheim armsmen We'll take our Ezrazire Warriors, Falon Warriors, Border Guards, Skirmishers, the Javelins are very good. And we'll take a retinue of Archers as well, and I think that's a decent enough force to defend the settlement. Let's see if you guys go right there for now, and then you guys can meet up on this forest. I think that's a good spot for them. And that's a decent army, we can always get more later, um, but we do need more gold. Which we will be making, we're making about 4,000 a turn now. And our current objective is actually to take Dunlark, which might give us more of our Adonaim armsmen. I would I would imagine it would. We might want to try to move these guys to Baloran to save it. I mean, no guarantee, and they do cost 490 upkeep. So as soon as we take them out, it's going to cost us. Although we can put them in this fort, and then next turn our ship will be down there. Over here, Astamir is getting ready to attack Keras and expand our borders, which is great. And then hopefully that means that, uh, well, Isengard will have less places to recruit from, which is good. And then hopefully with Isengard spending so much of their troops over here, hopefully Rohan can come in and, I don't know, uh, maybe take, take out Isengard Rohan? Like, is it is it that hard? I, I don't know where they're at. Uh, but at least we're winning the wars. It's been atrocious and it's been long. Uh, but we are making progress, and that is the most important thing, I would say so. Oh, hello, Isengard, with a army. Looks like they're going to attack us out in the field. That is fine with me. I think our army can take it. I know it's not the best army, but we do have cavalry, archers, infantry. Oh, wow, they've got a lot of heavy stuff here. Pikemen, uruk infantry, crossbows. Wow, okay, this army is actually a bit more potent than our army, if I was to say so. I believe we can take it. Of course, we have a shortage of horsemen, which kind of sucks, but we do have the numerical advantage, and I think I can make that work. But these Urukai infantry are going to be tough to kill. We don't have too much armor piercing outside of two crossbows and a halberdiers. Two of those. Yeah, we can make this work. If not, uh, well, at least we'll have to fight this army later. We should be able to do enough damage to it. Ideally, though, I'd like to not lose my whole army here. I want to still get to Keras. I would imagine this is their last strong army in this area, but I won't know for sure. Alright, and let's start our deployment. Now, something that's been going on in uh, my side of life here is I've been dealing with a bit of a mouse problem. Oh, we can get this hill. So I got some, like, humane, like, no-kill traps, and I've been setting them up. And I've caught two mice so far, and I'm hoping that's it. Um, it might be the same mouse, though, because I only released to maybe a thousand feet from my house, and uh, I read that you want to have um, mice basically released probably, it says, like, two miles is, is how far you should go. Um, when you release mice that you catch, so that they can't like smell their way back home. So this the second one I released him about a mile and a half away at a park, and I'm hoping that's that's good enough. I mean, he'd have to really travel. I mean, mice are small. A mile for a mouse is is a huge distance. All right, let's see. Let's get all of our archers. 
Um, we're probably going to want to be very defensive here. In fact, I don't like my formation at all. These border guards, I don't even know what they're going to do. They're just going to be out here chilling. Um, our front line, though, we'll probably want these border guards. Um, very nice, tight block formation. That way they can um, have more men in the ranks and hopefully hold off more. We'll probably saturate some halberdiers into the Dunnish Axemen here. I think that'll be okay. Um, we can have some spears on this side. These guys can be over here along with our general. Now we want to make use of our crossbows. That's going to be the biggest thing is how effective we can use these guys. So maybe we get a little bit more of a gap here. Just something like that maybe. And if we need to, we can we can close the gap. So that's one crossbow. Let's put the other over here and make somewhat of a checkerboard formation. You know, put the javelins behind those guys. And now we have two Kifei Huntsmen. We'll just have them sit right there. Azrazire Archers, we'll put them in the front. And Rosadon Bowmen, you guys should also go like right over here. And then what does that leave us? So we have... 47 Ezra Zayer Archers will send them up to the front. Use those guys as kind of our preemptive firing force. And then we have Ezra Zayer Raiders. We'll keep them on this right flank here, I think. And then Courses will also take the right flank. And a couple Halberdiers right there will do, I think. And that's everyone. So let's get our horsemen in a good position. Um, they have a lot of cavalry themselves. So it's going to be hard to just simply run in there. But maybe we can make their crossbows kind of shoot in into the tree line and maybe have them waste their shots on our Ezra Zir archers. So like everyone's getting in range now. Maybe we might as well just stay here, have everyone shoot those archers. Or shoot those crossbows, I mean. Oh no, those are the archers. Yeah, why don't you guys shoot at the ones behind? Oh, those crossbows are going to be tough to deal with. I'm hoping I can just sneak on in there. You guys all shoot at that while the general attempts, or the horsemen attempt to charge into archers and do some early damage. This is good. Alright, now pull out, pull out. Alright, now I'm going to move these archers up really close and just get them right up into those crossbows. It looks like their Dunlending Horsemen are coming up, so let's start pulling back now. You guys start running. Oh, and here come the Wargs. And you guys start running. Where are our Spearmen? Oh, we don't have any on this side, do we? Oh, we do have Fallon Border Guards. You guys keep running. Oh, this is not great for us. Uh, this is fine. This is totally fine. If we can just keep our crossbows trained on those warg marauders. Uh, Urukai infantry are coming up now. Uh, general, or sorry, cavalry, start to get in there, please. Halberdiers, please shut down those horsemen. Uh, we need to pull back right now. Have the halberdiers start engaging these spear guard. Our crossbows are the ones getting shot up, but that is okay. All right, we can probably start sending in our cavalry now to shut down the archers. Give a huntsman, please keep shooting up, and here comes the next threat: the pikemen. Mine as Josiah Raiders shut them down. Should have some uh, halberdiers in here doing way better than this. Oh, this isn't good. They're getting right up close. Oh, a bunch of them just died, though. You guys get in there. Where is our cavalry? How are they doing? Perfect. They're finally about to get into the uh, gun lines of Isengard. I fell on border guards. You guys will have to engage now. This is quite messy, but at least we're killing these horsemen. And our crossbowmen somewhat got away. 
I want them to move now too for a better firing position. The horsemen are beating the archers here. A lot of crossbows are down too, which is great. Alright, crossbows, why don't you move up now? Come on, horsemen, take out these, uh... Keep taking them out. We're winning the battle, that's for sure. And we're shooting into these Baneguard with these archers. Not bad. Our cavalry, though, needs to group up and form up again. But half of them are dead, which is great. We're fighting the general, who I think is on this warg. Oh, it looks like he's dead now, which is great for me. And let's have everyone shoot at their crossbows. Like, do we have any more fishermen? Oh wow, our footmen are getting wrecked up here. Fishermen, go in and charge on that. Cavalry, yep, go ahead and pull out now, Cav. These Ezra's Air Raiders are gonna need some support. Like, we might as well start to uh, bring our halberds closer now to those enemies. Thankfully, we're trading okay in terms of missiles. Like, our. We haven't taken too much damage um, to our crossbows or anything. I want you guys start shooting at those. You guys start shooting at those and crossbows. I think in a second here I'll pull them up to start shooting into those pikemen. And we are beating them at the moment, which is great. Oh jeez. Oh, you guys are shooting at the wrong target. You guys are shooting right into my horses. Uh, pull out again. Uh, crossbows should be able to shoot at these pikemen now. We'll keep working on those archers. And how's this fight going? It could be better. It could definitely be better. But we've just got heavy elite infantry to fight now. I'm still working on these Bane Guard. Uh, are they still really shooting at those? Come on, shoot at the ones in front of you. Don't shoot at the guys down the hill. see this come on point blank volleys right into the Bane guard if we can just slowly whittle down this flank and then work on the rest we'll be okay there's a lot of pikemen here uh, crossbows have to move you down now our general's fighting against uh, Urukai infantry one of our units did route which is sad uh, let's pull our cavalry out there looks like our archers have shut down most of the enemy archers now so let's switch over to them who else is still shooting you guys are shooting at those it's perfect yep and we are now slowly turning the tides of the battle if these crossbows can just get into a better position and shoot into those bane guard i think we'll be all right now how are are actually destroying these urukai crossbowmen in melee which is amazing Oh, and we killed the general. That should just cause some routes to start happening. Yes, there we go. Let's charge into those. Why don't you guys run into the pikemen? Capture them. You guys capture those. Come on, chase them all down. Show them no quarter. And the rest of these Bane Guard will slowly fall. Might as well just shoot them with uh, our archers. Well, our cavalry chases all of these Baneguard over here. I want to make sure I'm only shooting with specific units right now. You guys are still firing at those archers. That is fine. We'll use our horsemen to capture the rest of the Baneguard and infantry. Specifically these Urukai infantry over here. Come on, get those Baneguard out. Like, Baneguard are really, really good. Phenomenal units for Isengard. Them and the Spearguard are just... Very, very strong. Uh, come on, get the rest of those infantry out of here. I mean, we've killed enough that their whole army will be broken now. I just wonder how much value we'd get if we did ransom them, but we won't, because we need to... We need to take settlements right now. Alright. 590 to 1500, that battle went a lot better than I was expecting. Looks like the most kills go to the horsemen again, 244... So our Fallon border guards basically died off, though, the unit of five, that's fine. 
And then we're also done Halberdiers, 157 over there, 111 on these. Maybe I was talking too much, uh, too poorly about those guys. They seem to do pretty all right in this, in this battle. Although Isengard is mostly just armor, not defense skill. They're like the exact opposite of Gundabad, where Gundabad is all defense skill, but no armor, almost like no shields, like very few shields. And Isengard is all about shields and armor, so Isengard can take arrows fine. They can take non-AP damage fine, but I guess even lower-end armor-piercing units can do a lot to Isengard. And thankfully we will have the infrastructure to start pumping out more of our better units. Yeah, we'll execute them. And hopefully they don't have any more. And looks like they're actually pulling away from Baloran, which gives us a, a chance to reinforce Lond Angren and keep Baloran safe. Right, and Murray's Besiege, that might be a good target for us to take some time, just to get a ton of money. In fact, if we go to Dunlark and we go to Byrig, we're literally on the doorstep of Moria, and that's tempting. Of course, fighting dwarves is hard, but oh man, could you imagine the money we'd get from Khazad Doom? Right, Astamir, Proven Commander, that is excellent. Now it looks like Dunlin has a few small armies that we're going to need to fight off here. But Gimelzor and Gimelthon should be able to head out now, although... Ooh, there's a big army up to the north, too. Is there anything we can recruit? Ah, we'll just... We'll take all the, the poor units that we can. And then here... Oh, we can recruit a lot. Um, let's get the... Hmm, we want more dike skirmishers. Those are really good. And probably Falon warriors, but they take two turns, so I think we need the quicker units. And weren't we working on the trebuchet? Yeah, we were three turns till we can get that. So let's get the halberdiers for now. And we'll just keep recruiting there. On Angren, if it gets attacked, not too bad. Looks like... Oh, wow, he's got a big army, though. Uh, can we make it to Karas? What's in Karas right now? Just three units, and we could fight Captain... Yeah, let's fight Captain Maudouche. I think that should... Yep, perfect. This will start the battle right outside of the settlement. And we can just simply take it this turn. I will cheese it like this if I need to. <laughs> but if you can, if if we can do it all on one turn, I'd prefer that rather than sieging it out and waiting. The quicker you can move on the campaign map, the better. All right, and we'll start deployment now. Nice open field battle works good for the sheer amount of archers that we have. In fact, we could honestly just do a gun line like that and probably be okay. You guys up front. Most of our infantry is pretty tattered at the moment. But they'll be okay, I think. And we do have our general. That'll be front line. As is our warriors, I guess, right over there. Also in the front line. And then you guys just go right there. And the question is, do we just rush them? I think we just need to rush them. It's, uh... Urukai archers, um, and then Bane guards, so yeah, let's just, uh, start moving up. If we can, we'll have to shut down those archers with our cavalry. And they might just run away and take a defensive position on this hill. Yeah, that's exactly what they're gonna do, huh? At least we'll be on the hill and be able to fire down, um, at our opponent from above here. They're going to go for the fishermen, it looks like. Yep. That makes sense. Now you guys get in there now. That cavalry's coming in. This is great. We'll shoot down the Reavers from range. And then run in with our infantry to shut down the uh, Urukai archers. Most of the Reavers are getting taken down. This is excellent. Look at all those arrows just coming in. That's what you get for not being resistant to arrows. Well, they are going to go for a crossbows, it looks like. They're runaway crossbows. 
They're taking our arrow fire relatively well. They must have armor upgrades. Here comes all the javelins now. Looks like the enemy's almost to us, though. They are directly behind us. Come on, one more volley should do it. Perfect. At least most of these archers are now gone. General, why don't you pull out this way now? We'll need to engage our enemy behind us. How many are there? Just Uruk Reavers, Urukai Archers, nothing too threatening. Come on, keep capturing them in melee. What are you guys doing? You guys fight those. Run away. Well, how's this fight going? Have you guys won yet? Still not yet. Right, well, we're fighting the Uruk Reavers now. Our crossbows are all trained onto the... Um, what do you call them? Onto the spear guard. Right, pull away, pull away. Okay, we're just going to go in on melee now. And you guys start shooting at those. And then you guys should probably run down here. We're beating these reavers now. I mean, maybe not. We're actually not doing great. I stand corrected. Yeah, Mordak Fisherman, not the best unit to be fighting um, Orc Spear Guard with, but it'll have to do. Shooting down to these Urukai archers, and looks like the next one is dead. That's great. Was that the reinforcements, or was that the first one? I am not sure. But you guys chase those. Come on, crossbows, get up a bit closer so you can actually land your shots. Alright, this is going great. How are we doing moving to engage? You guys fire at those. Who are you? Dunnish Axemen? Let's pull you in now. So horsemen should be killing most of these archers off. Come on, capture them all, please. We'll move these um, crossbows up now. Now you guys run over here. Crossbows start shooting on those archers. Resident Bowman pull up a little bit closer. And with Dunnish Axemen in here getting into melee should give us the support we need. To finish off these Reavers and most of these archers are dead. Fantastic. Uh, that's probably enough on those archers. You guys try to capture everything over here. And now the spear guard are being shot from both sides, archers and uh, crossbows. Of course, this is the issue with spear guard. Lower attack values mean they will not be uh, killing our infantry so quickly. So even our lightly armored Mordag fishermen can somewhat hold the line against them. Why don't you guys charge those Uruk Reavers? We have decided to condense into our formation here, but they are so outnumbered that, yeah, it's not going to work for them. And they are routed. This is perfect. I'll try to chase down every last one of them just to make sure that we don't, uh... What do you call it? That we don't miss anyone? And that they don't escape with their lives? I don't want to have them actually get back into the settlement. And, well, those archers got away, but I think we still killed enough at the end of the day. 95% I mean, of the force is dead. And, well, that'll do it. 160, and they only have 40 men left, so that is not enough orcs to stay in that settlement. So now we finally take care of us. We've finally taken some new land. It's been a couple of turns. We've been on the defensive. But uh, it's, it's like a tide. If you can withstand the high tide, then you can push out during the low tide. I think I think that's what the saying would be. If, if you can, if, if you're... Uh, 
port can take the high tide, then it can take the low tide. Speaking of ports, I've been building ports in Valheim, and that is just a tedious endeavor. Since you can't really build in water that well. If you're swimming, you can't build, and the tides rise and sink. So sometimes you can build, and then sometimes you can't. Alright, so, yeah, we're going to execute those. Estimir getting some good combat training, and then he should be able to just walk right in there. And, uh, we'll... Uh, I want to exterminate it, but I don't at the same time. I don't like losing... I mean, we might have to. If we're going to push out more, I think we have to exterminate. I mean, we need to kill some of them, I think. 3,900. Yeah, we have to. I can't just not exterminate it at the moment. Oh, we don't need the warrior tall. Actually, ooh, we get... Ah, oh, that's perfect. Is that the second tier? That is, isn't it? Oh, wow, that's actually a good capture. So now we can get two... Um, places where we can recruit Adonai Armsmen right off the bat. And uh, chicken farming, I guess we can cut that. Anything else we can keep? Or don't need to keep? Looks like everything else is fine except for this warg breeder. So we're going to want to immediately go for our dark sanctuaries and get the culture up here. And we might as well give these guys some armor while they're here. 20 turns till we can actually get the armsmen, but that's not too bad. Yeah, we would not be able to handle the public order there. Mortar's reputation is poor, but that's fine. And now all food's getting even more money because we have another um, border province. That is amazing. All right, can we recruit some extra units here in time? And get those two, and maybe that'll maybe they'll recruit before before it's too late. Who knows? We have more money to play around with. The question is, do we go for military or infrastructure? Maybe just public or, or like free upkeep slots might be a good way to go. We don't even have land clearance at Argon. That seems like something that we should get. But also, getting a Warlord's Hall for extra free upkeep seems kind of nice. Although it wouldn't benefit us now. But we are working on our public order. We could get a barracks here or... Yeah, let's go for Warlord's Hall. Get the free upkeep and then go for a barracks. And I think everything else is looking solid. We don't really need to invest in our far regions like Burgost is whatever. It can just it can just be a town. After all, it's borders friendly territory, which is nice. Uh Elk Food, can you do anything? Not yet, but you are building, so we'll save our money for more buildings next turn. And yeah, what are we gonna do here? We have to deal with Captain Haldor, we want to go for Dunlaric, but we need to kill all of these smaller forces that are scattered around, and then potentially we'll need to pull back to defend against this Dunland army, because, yeah, that's a lot of guys, and that is not enough forces to defend it. Ah, oh, crap, I, I don't like this. Alright, we'll bring back the elites, they'll have to go back to Tharbad, and then you can probably fight this captain. Ah, oh, there's two of them here. Okay, well, we need to get Dunlin's smaller forces taken care of while they're scattered like this. We brought back our elites to Tharbad to defend it, because I do not want to lose that. And if we have to bide our time until we can expand out more to Dunlin, that's fine. Because when we take Dunlin's cities, they're going to get a last stand army, and that's going to be a bit tougher to deal with. Now, you guys up here, so we have a decent amount of archers... We'll just do something like that. Rosadon up here, Kifei over here. And then we have... Oh man, we don't have much for infantry that's like shielded. We'll bring these two guys up. As as our warriors can take this flank, and Fallon warriors can take that. And what does that leave us with? Some skirmishers? Perfect. And take you guys. Perfect. Alright, let's start pushing up now. Uh, Dunlending Warband, Axemen, and uh, Pikemen to kill. And we do have, uh, what do you call them? We do have some Javelins that we can use on those Warband. But we might as well shoot the um, Axemen with our missiles. Kivei Huntsman moving up. Fisherman moving up. And of course it's going to be really rainy, so it's going to kind of hurt us a little bit. 
That's going to really mess up our missile damage. I want you guys to switch to uh, the farmhand pikeman now. Let's pull up there. Let's charge in now. Fallon warriors, get ready to flank. In fact, this is actually going to be perfect. We can get all these axemen on them. Ooh, that's going to be nice. Fallon warriors will just cut through Dunish axemen, though. Oh, they're actually already routing. That's perfect. So you have one rear charge, and they're done. Come on, route them. All right, maybe let's throw one volley in there to cool, to cool their numbers a bit. And yeah, they are just not taking damage from our missiles. At least not the arrows, but these javelins will do all right. I mean, don't be a farmhand pikeman. I wouldn't have to kill you. Like, just stay at your farms. Don't come out and fight. <laughs> it's that easy. All right, well, we did kill off these uh, Dunlending Warband, which is great. Throwing a few javelins into their backs as they attempt to run away. And we still have a lot of time till the reinforcements get here. And now these Dunish Axemen will start to run for the hills from which they came. Come on, capture them all, please. Show them no quarter. And whatever we do, do not be on fire at will. Let the archers keep shooting the pikemen. We can probably charge into them in just a moment. In fact, yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll start charging. I think Fallon Warriors in here to cause some fear. And then Azrazire Warriors um, hitting them in the back. Fallon Border Guards. I mean, that right piercing is not necessary. Perfect. They are running away. We're not going to capture those guys. Let's run back. Oh, oh, they're coming this way. Yep, capture them all, please. I hate to execute farmhand pikemen, but uh, we gotta do what we gotta do. Right, come on, capture those. Ah, oh, he was the general, really. Right, here comes the next army. Let's take a position right here. Have all our guys just walk there. We don't need to run. Conserve your energy. And this is why I like the locked formations. You can just immediately put your army back in the formation it was in. Alright, and it uh, looks like Dunlending Pikemen coming up. Dunnish Hunters, that's going to be something threatening to deal with. Oh, what the heck? Did they come back? No, we're able to shoot at them now, aren't we? Perfect. So those Dunnish Hunters are going to be somewhat of a threat, but not too bad. They do have Berserkers also that we need to deal with. Not sure who these guys are supposedly targeting. Probably being in our uh, Mordag skirmishers. When you guys squeeze through there, don't interrupt our forces. A little nice little column formation between the two lines of archers. I want you guys shoot at hunters now. Dunish Pikeman did take very good damage here. And now here come the javelins. This is our best method to kill these guys since they are more armored. All right, and here comes the armor piercing volley from the Mordag skirmisher. Such an amazing unit. Perfect. I love how much damage javelins can do. And they got shaken from that volley. I think we still got one or two more volleys left with these guys. A few more getting claimed. And here comes the last volley right into their backs. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Hey, why don't you guys start shooting at those uh, berserkers now? You guys run into those and border guards. Get ready to engage the berserkers. So are they running away? Oh no, they're coming back. Now you guys switch back to the uh, Hunters now. Dunnish Spearmen are running away. And we still have these Axemen. I forgot about them. Let's see here. We'll pull those guys in. Fallon Warriors will be good at charging into the 
um, right into the uh, Berserkers here. After all, they have no armor outside of what we've given them, so three armor, but they're all defense skill, high attack. Yeah, they'll be able to just massacre these uh, uh, Dunlending Berserkers in melee. Yeah, frickin' wrecked. And this is perfect. Mordek Fisherman, why don't you guys go ahead and start tossing the last of your volleys into those Dunlending Axemen. And we're doing alright. We are doing alright. Well, it looks like they got a counter charge by pulling out, and they did kill a couple of our Fallen Warriors, but that's fine. We'll finish them off in just a moment. We'll completely trap them, too. Come on, don't let them get away. And looks like our general is just going to keep basically forcing those uh, archers to run away, so I'm not sure how we're going to catch those. Guess we're just going to have to shoot them down, aren't we? We hardly have any arrows left, though, so that kind of makes it difficult. Now you guys form up now. I'm going to do like a very wide flank. Like, yeah, we're almost out of ammo. No, they're going to shoot at our border guard, it looks like. Or our skirmishers. I think they're shooting at the skirmishers. Alright, well, let's start to try to surround them. If you guys can run up there like that. We need to keep our distance um, and try to just to get them from all sides. That's the only way we're going to catch these archers. Now let's go, we might as well go into a loose formation while they keep shooting at us. Uh, it looks like they are getting very close. If we can just get our axemen up there, household guard right over here, and basically just keep them just outside of skirmish range. Uh, you guys charge in. You guys charge in. You guys fight those spearmen. You guys charge in. And general will probably have you come out more this way. And our warriors are very tired, so that fight's probably not going to go too well for them. Uh, yeah, but we did catch the Dunish Hunters, though. This is great. And now the rest of our forces can go charge these Dunish Spearmen. Come on, don't let them get away. Perfect. Alright, let's go ahead and put this on time 6 for a minute. Sadly, they still get away. We don't have any, um, what do you call it, any cavalry, so it makes it a little harder to capture our, for our enemy forces here. And yeah, that'll be good enough. And we can execute them or get a thousand gold, but we're just going to execute them. We show Dunland no mercy. And we could even get some bandits here. Might not be a bad call. Just that way we at least have one more unit. They still have this captain over here that we need to deal with. Yeah, let's see if we can push him off. Uh, that'll do for now. I really don't like having to fight all these micro armies, but uh, we gotta do what we gotta do. I think we'll just end the turn there. Let them form up for a bigger battle, so that way we're not doing just tons of little battles for an entire episode. Should we grab more troops here? No, I think we should save our money. Probably nothing that we can get up here, huh? Any mercenaries? Nope, none in this region. That is okay, though. We'll just end that turn and just see what happens. Now, hopefully Isengard does not get to Londangren, but uh, I think they will. In fact, they should be able to just besiege it this turn, unless they decide to... If they decide to pull back, that would be great. But, I mean, who knows for sure what's going to happen. Gondor's got an army over here, too. Gondor, why don't you attack Isengard? <laughs> There's something weird that happens with Gondor, where they like to go out into the kind of northwestern corner of their empire. Like, they, they like to go through that little mountain pass and for whatever reason it's like some kind of weird pathing thing they have there. Uh, I mean I guess if they help Rohan it, it works out but it's just weird what they do. And I really hate Dunlin right now. I hate how many little wildman armies they have just scattered around. 
they're almost like a horde faction at this point. There's just little micro armies causing devastation everywhere. And there's just too many to do every single battle, because after you kill a couple, then they send out more individual units. I wish they would just gather up their forces. Let me do a few big battles, and more as leaders, Ted. That sucks for them. And the hordes are enraged, so it looks like Dunland has pushed into Western Moria now. It is 80 turns in, so it's about time. Did I say Dunland? I mean Khazad-du. Alright, we have a lot going on here. Tharbad has a barracks built, which is amazing. What do we need um, for the bridge? Is it like 75% culture? Alright, 47%. When we do get that, ooh, these Royal Knights and Royal Guard are going to be amazing. Especially the Knights. I can't wait for that. Now, the question is, though, what do we build here? Do we go for the bows? Or actually, I think we want to get our guard barracks and our army barracks. So yeah, let's go for a great hall there. And Ulk Food, what about you? You got your barracks? So you can get Rosadons out here. Um, we could go for the halls here and get our better barracks also. Could even get our archery range and get more in our Duba Whip. I think that's a good call. Let's go for... What do we need? A great hall. So that's two upgrades. We'll go for that and work on it. And then um, hopefully get the great hall. And then get the archers out of Alk food. We'll get infantry out of Londir and Tharbad and archers out of Alk food. Um, but we are still working on our siege works, which is fine. Now, Isengard, where did they go? Looks like they're going back for Baloran, huh? Yep, they're going to make their next turn. So this is basically lost. I don't think we'll be able to save it. Ah, it's just so annoying that they're still going for that. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a strong army. We're going to need to send in some elites here. All right, do you have any forces? You have some marines, but that's not going to... I mean, they might, they'll make it in time, but it's just not going to help. Well, let's bring all of these guys. In fact, we'll leave the Azrazire Raiders, but we'll take everyone else. And at the very least, they'll be ready to get it next turn, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, we're not going to make it. Now, let's have you go here. You grab those. You hop in there. You hop in there, and it'll be another two turns. I mean, they're going to take it. I think at this point, it's a guaranteed that they will take the settlement. But we can at least maybe have a captain army get there. Although a captain army is not going to do anything. We need a proper uh, general. And Isengard, just a lot more is coming this way. What are you doing? Uh, well, maybe... Oh, probably shouldn't have done that. Well, maybe we can take uh, Astamir here. Let these guys kind of defend the land. Have Astamir um, retake... Um, Baloran over here. I wish we had more generals, but we just don't. At least not yet. Um, I think when we get more family members, we'll be okay. And we could have Andaka Mike go down there, but he's kind of a governor. He's not so much of a military guy. We have a lot of guys in the east. Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, the only way we're going to be able to take it back is with a general. Because, I mean, what are these two units going to do to this whole army? Not much. There's way too many units there, even if they are half dead. We would need, we would definitely need Astamir, we would need the cavalry, and just hope that the, uh, yeah, that the rest of these forces can defend against Isengard here. We'll take the cavalry, and it's a good call. You go out there, and if we need to, we can fight these guys off with a captain army and see if that does anything for us. Um, can't retrain anything in Ulk food yet. Um, I mean, I guess we could train in some footmen and halberdiers and actually have some proper units here and we're gonna want to send these horsemen up north and well yeah dunlin just completely scattered everywhere oh, we really have to fight all these guys it's gonna be annoying because they're gonna run away and then do that and that and that we'll cat we'll kill this guy we'll kill this small army Ooh, it's two elite units see that i'm fine with i'm fine with killing elite units like that but i don't like how they're all just spread out in a hundred different places Probably just kill as many of these guys off as we can. And Auto Resolve doesn't kill off a whole army, and it just gets too many of our guys killed to really use it. Now right, we're going to start deployment, and immediately we'll just have you go up here. We have our Axemen. All we really need are the Axemen and the Archers. Everyone else is fine. Right, we have um, Fishermen and Javelins for this bodyguard here. 
We have arrows and javelins for the Eisenbach Axemen. As his air warriors will be good to charge into him from the flank. And we'll probably go for one solid volley. See if we can do any early damage. You guys keep running up here though. Make sure you guys are not on fire at will mode. Do not waste your javelins yet. No, we are killing a few with our arrows though. That's nice. Alright. Mordags, go ahead and shoot. We'll do as much arrow damage as we can before they engage. Just to make the make the battle go a little quicker. Of course, these javelins are going to be the real damage. And that took out a few. We'll probably save the rest because there's a lot of other guys we need to kill. So the arrow storm keep hitting them and then we'll engage. That's a lot of bloods flying everywhere. Oh, we killed a few of our Mordag fishermen. That's not good. Now you guys should probably stop firing. And you guys are good now. Alright, Axemen, charge. Fishermen, get in position. And then Axemen also get up here. Look at these brave sons of Numenor fighting off against these wild men here. This man's about to get stabbed. Fell to his death. Axes coming in, swinging heads off. Ooh, a big, long overhead swing right there. Our Axemen are fighting in a very weird formation, though. Very scattered. And that's some issue I've noticed, which is... Axes in general, like two-handed units, sometimes they'll just charge with the front rank, and I don't know what's with that. Come on, guys, get in there. There we go. All right, start start cleaving that general here. He should die quickly to all these armor piercing. Yep, already dead. That was fast. All right, now we just need to form up for the next army. We have Axemen here. Let's form up right here. We'll do. We won't need the rest of our forces. We'll just need what we've got. So we'll definitely want to shoot the crap out of those Axemen with everything we've got. In fact, I don't like how poorly I managed my archer's positioning here. Let's pull you guys over here. Have you guys stand right there. And then Razadon. Pull up, and as soon as you're in range, just start firing. After all, these guys don't have a shield value, although they do have giant shields on their backs. And Kifei, are you in range yet? Not quite. The Razadon should be in range now, that looks close enough, yep. And Kifei Hunters will also soon be in range. Come on, start firing. Put it on time six. And I think the Axemen are less armored than the Pikemen, if I'm not mistaken. Let's check that. So they have 9 armor, Pikemen have 11. Yep, I am correct. So Pikemen are much harder to shoot with. Might as well get our Javelins ready. They'll do even more damage to these, uh, these poor Axemen. I'm just getting massacred, though. We've already killed, like, what, 60 of them? Which is not bad at all. And then Mordag Fishermen, because they don't they don't have AP javelins, but they have high missile damage javelins. That way we get a few more kills. But we'll want all of our Mordag skirmishers to be aimed onto those pikemen. Alright, now the pikemen are getting engaged with the uh, archer lines, which is just fine. I'll keep up the damage. Alright, start chucking those pikes. We're chucking those javelins just right above the heads of our other troops. They should just fly just overhead. That's perfect. And I toss all those javelins. Every last one needs to go into those pikemen. There we go. Perfect. All right, general, run in there. Oh, archers, why are you not running away? Oh, you guys are shooting at the wrong target. Shoot at that, please. Oh, yes, they're running away, actually. That's perfect. All 
Alright, chuck more javelins, please. No, we're facing the wrong way here, aren't we? And this should do a lot of damage. Although, they do kind of hit the same side over and over again, so they don't get as many kills as I would like. Well, let's just start charging in. I'll get one more volley off. We hit a few of our own guys there, but that's fine. Do one more volley, and that should just about do it. And they're down to 85 javelins. They're in a good wide position. 73. Oh, fighting to the death. That is perfect. Yep, that is actually perfect. Alright, let's capture them all now. I think he's the last one. Yep, just kill him. Last one falls, and that is the battle. So we killed a general, and we killed two elite Dunland units. Though they're not that elite. We can kill them without any issues at all. And we'll just execute these guys. And we still have like three, four more armies here to kill off. And even then, Dunland still has a big force here. It's got to be because of um, Byrig over here, because Byrig was turned into a... Um, their actual capital, at least at the start of the game. Although they don't have anything here, it looks like they've just been sending everything they recruit out to the west, so... It is what it is. I might just have to off-screen these, uh, the rest of these smaller armies, because I don't think it's that... Uh, enjoyable to watch all these tiny skirmishes. I want to make some progress. But at least we took Keras in this episode. Now we'll have to defend Balorn and then... I hopefully get Dunlarak very soon, although they have a full army in here. I think we're going to need those trebuchets, which are nearly done. Two more turns, and then we can start pumping those out. But anyway, guys, this has been Sir Agamund. And if you're liking the content, hit that like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe. And uh, if you want those notifications, hit that little bell icon. That way you don't miss any uploads. And if you guys would do me one more favor, uh, just checking out the Warhammer Battle videos. Even if you're not super interested in the Warhammer Battles, um... I'd just like to see if any feedback on my multiplayer battles, what I could do to, to make the casting better, maybe make the replays look better, um, or even just uh, getting um, more attention to those. I'd like that, as that is another part of my channel I wish to grow. Primarily, I'm going to stay as Divide and Conquer, but I'd like to, I mean, if I can, I'd like to be a uh, content partner with Creative Assembly. Um, I think that would be really, really cool to do. But anyway, guys, this has been Sir Agamund, and I will see you next time.